Hey guys, Becky here, 52 Baker. Welcome back. This week we'll be working on a sugar alstroemeria, also known as a Peruvian lily or a lily of the Incas. We'll be making it without any wires, and if you don't have the cutters, don't worry about it. I'll have a free download for a cutter template in the description. And the veiner we'll be using is just the generic veiner that I've shared with you guys in the past. So don't worry about any special equipment or tools, but let's get right to it. To start off, because I won't be using any wires, I'm just going to roll out my flower paste on my work surface without any veining board, and I'm going to roll it out pretty thin. Go as thin as you're comfortable with. Once I have it rolled out, then using my templates, which will be linked in the description below, I go ahead and cut out a total of six petals three of the thinner ones and then three of the wider ones. To cut it out, you can use this fondant rotary tool or you can use an X-Acto knife, a little scalpel, whatever you have on hand. Now that all of my petals are cut out, I pop them onto my foam board and using a large rolling ball tool, I'm just going to thin out those edges so they're not so blunt. My flower paste is already pretty thin, so I don't really need to roll it out to get it very much thinner. The bottom of each of my petals, I won't roll because I do want to leave those a little bit thicker. I want them to be able to hold up the weight of my petals a bit. So I'm just focusing on the top of the flower petals. Once those are thinned out, then I go ahead and bring out my generic veiner that I love so much. I'm going to use this veiner to vein each of my petals. I just pop it right in, give it a good squeeze because the veins are a bit faint, and then I pop it back onto my foam board. Once all of my petals are veined, I pop them back onto my foam board and using a Dresden tool, I'm going to add a few more lines of texture. I add two in the center, sort of bowed out. Those are deeper and I'm using the fatter end of my Dresden tool for that. One on the right, one on the left. And then using the thinner side of my Dresden tool, I hold on to the tip of my petal and I sort of fringe out the ends of the petal, just so it doesn't look so cookie cutter straight. I'll go ahead and do the same thing for the larger petals. And the Peruvian Lily has this sort of little point in the center. So while I'm doing that, I go ahead and squeeze the flower paste together to make that little point. And it also serves as a good little holding spot while I sort of tug out on the ends of each of my petals. Both the skinny and the larger petals go through the same process. For some of my larger petals, if they're getting a bit too rounded, then I'll go ahead and flip them over to do the same fringing out and thinning on the back of it. I don't really want this petal to be very curved. I want it to have some movement, but I don't want it to be rounded out. It's a bit more of a flat petal. Once I'm happy with my petals, then I'm going to pop them onto a foam board to dry. And the most important part here is that the base of the petal hangs down over the foam board. So for me, I had to prop up my foam board a bit more just to give it more space to hang down. And then the base of the petal, I squeeze it closed so that when it begins to dry, it dries in a sort of circular rounded shape so that each of the petals can fit snugly against the wire that we're going to make next, which will be our center wire. 
I'm trying to get the petals to lay sort of flat and just sort of hang over the edge. If they have a bit more movement, there's no problem with that. The most important part is that rounded base. And once you're happy with them, put them to the side to dry for just a bit. We don't want these petals to be fully dry. We want them to be workable when we attach them in just a bit. Now for the center of our flower, I'm going to use some store-bought stamen. I'll have six on their own and then three that I'll attach together. The three I attach together, I'll first tape on with some floral tape to a carrier wire. But to make sure I have the right size, I use my template again as a guide. I want it to go about three quarters of the way up the petal and then have some extra at the bottom to attach to the wire. The carrier wire I'm using today is an 18 gauge, but you could go with a 20 or a 22. It's not a very heavy flower. I just like the strength and structure that comes with an 18 gauge wire. I go ahead using my floral tape and attach the stamen to the wire and then I just run my floral tape all the way down to get a clean finish. Once they're taped on, I go ahead and add some edible glue to most of the stamen and some of the wire. I don't go all the way up the stamen because the three will separate at the top. It'll be like an open little triangle. So I don't want my flower paste to stick on there. I want it to stick on the rest of the store-bought stamen and some of the floral wire. This is going to be my center pistol. It's a little tricky to add it on there to attach it. So I start off thicker than I need and then I pull, I tug, and I twiddle it between my fingers to get it the right thickness. Some will come off through the bottom and some through the top, but just go as thin as you're comfortable with. The base for mine is always a little bit thicker. I try to thin it out as much as possible towards the top and then leave it just a smidge thicker on the bottom. Once I'm happy with it, I give it a little bit of a curve so it looks more natural and I set it off to dry. Now for coloring, you can go with any colors that you want, but the colors I'll be using today are a combination of fuchsia and rose red. To start off, I'll be coloring the freestanding six stamen that I have, and I'll be mixing these colors together and just straight dusting the threads from top to bottom with the colors, getting as much to stay on as I can. Next, I'll bring in my center pistol and I'll add some color to it. I want it to fade away towards the top and be a bit darker on the bottom. Now last, to finish off my stamen, I'm going to add a bit of edible glue to the ends of it and add some green pollen. This pollen is a combination of green color dust along with some cornmeal just to give it a bit of a thicker texture. I dip them in there. If any excess falls off, that's fine. I at least have the color and some of the texture and then I just let them dry. Now that my pistol is dry, I go ahead and separate the top three parts so that it forms that open little triangle. And then I'll get ready to attach the stamen. Now with my petals ready to be colored, they're semi-dry. I'm going to go ahead and use the same color scheme of red and fuchsia. And I'm just going to add a bit of color to the edges and then drag the color in a bit so it fades. I'll be doing the same process for all six petals. If there's any excess dust, I'll use a clean fluffy brush to brush off the excess just so that the brush that I'm currently using to add the color doesn't add too much color to my petal.
Once I'm done with all of the fuchsia and red, to two of my thin petals, I'll be adding a yellow center. This is sort of a cheap color that I'm using, so I have to add a whole bunch so that it shows. I go ahead with a bit of a stiff brush to add it just because I really want it to stay on there. And then I dust it off towards the top and towards the bottom so the color fades away. Another color I'll be adding is sort of a spring green and I'll be adding it to the tips that we pinched on each of the petals. All six petals will get a little bit of green just to make them look a little more real and give them some more color. I think adding green always works and I think it's so pretty. The last color I'll be adding is the mix of fuchsia and red on my three center petals. And I'll be adding these little dots. For this, I recommend a very thin and soft paintbrush. This one is needle thin and all I do is wet my color. You could use water, alcohol, extracts, whatever you have. And then just freehand a few little lines on there. You press your brush down a bit and then lift it and slide to get that nice little swoop. Now that I have everything ready, I'll go ahead and start attaching my stamen to the center pistol. I'll start first by taping them at the bottom and I'll add them one at a time, trying to evenly space them all around. Next, I'll start gluing the very base of my pistol, that thicker part where the gum paste is at, just a bit because that's where I'll be sticking each of the petals. Once that has some glue, I'll add a bit of glue to the three center petals I'll be working with first. And just to make this easier, I'm going to add some glue to all three center petals first. And then I'm going to attach them to the center wire while they're upside down. Because they're not fully dried, I don't want them to flop over. And then with the stamen being so wiggly, I don't want them to get in my way. So it's just easier to work upside down. You want to make sure your three petals are evenly spaced and give them a good squeeze to make sure that they adhere well. Once they're all on there, this is what they should look like. And then you can give it just a minute to set and then go ahead and add your larger petals. I'll be repeating the exact same process for my larger petals, just adding glue to the base and then positioning them evenly around the first three. The only thing to keep in mind is you want to see each petal, so don't layer them, but overlap them. Once you're done, make sure to give it a good squeeze. This is what it should look like. And then hang it upside down to dry fully. Once my flower is at least mostly dry, I go ahead and work on cleaning up the bottom a bit. And for this, I'm going to add some edible glue to the base of the petal and to the wire that's connected directly to it. Then using a round little ball of green gum paste, I'm going to squeeze it all the way around to cover part of the base of the petals and part of the wire. Once I have it on there, then I just go ahead and form it. I want it to be a little bit thick and then thin out as it goes down the wire. And I also want it to push up against the base of the petals a bit. I find it easiest to work with my hands and with a Dresden tool. So using the Dresden tool, I just carefully push it in place. And then with my hands, I squeeze it out as much as I need to. It's also easier for me to work with, with my hands when my fingers have some edible glue on it. The edible glue just sort of melts the gum paste into place and it also helps strengthen it because it does have Tylose powder in it. 
So I can rely on this little green part to hold my petals in place just a bit more since it will be stronger from the Tylos. I'll go ahead and stretch it out and form it until I'm happy. And once I am, I go ahead and hang it upside down again to finish drying fully. And that's it. Here goes the completed flower. I added another flower to the stem and gave it a few petals. I love how clean the base looks and I think the petals are so pretty. I love the touch of green. As always, if you found this tutorial helpful, please do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. It would help so much. And if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please leave them down in the comments below. I'll make sure to get back to you. If not, I will see you guys for the next tutorial.